13 Questions by Man Transcending Manhood in the Digital Age That was Alan Letson. Alan's going to be part of the team. Uh, what do you mean going to be? Really? You haven't let him on yet? Yeah. You're making him wait outside. Is this Fight Club? Did you start some sort of like 13 questions club that I haven't been in? Fi- Holy crap. Guys, I might be doing the podcast with myself. <laughs> yeah, this is all just This uh, is internet. just a dream. See? I'm in a dream, Bill. <laughs> Yeah, but no, yeah, he's already, he's here. He's did, he did it. He's already, we're already doing team things. Uh, he's going to be doing the stickers for us and helping out with some other. You gave his full name already? Yeah, Alan Letson. Awesome. He's, he will be doing marketing uh, aspects for the show, running the store when we get that all yep. set up integral in setting designing. us up with quality stickers and t-shirts and the ability to get them printed and design uh we were just going over some of that i'm i'm kind of excited i hadn't quite been able to visualize things before that so um i don't know just see, seeing in my mind scripted out the 13 questions on the front of a shirt and imagining myself encountering that shirt because i always read you know lettering if it's on a shirt it's like mm-hmm. uh, it's it's an impulse that's going to happen, and those would stop me. Those would keep me staring. So I don't know that I kind of like that idea. That uh, that would be a fun way to share the show because what is the show? You know, at, at the heart of the show, the show is is the thirteen questions. You know, so I mean, you can you can chew on everything. You can get an an, an encapsulation, an entirety of the entire show. Enough that you're like, I'm intrigued by that because now I have to think about that because I can't even just answer that. It's a deep thought. So I don't know. That's that's kind of cool to be able to put on a shirt. And I think it would be a good way to 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 at least, hey, start conversation with people out there about, you know, where do you get your wisdom? There you go. Another title for the shirt. Yeah, there's I mean, there's going to be tons of different ideas and designs available to purchase. Um, we were just looking at a logo that he's working on for us that we're going to incorporate into, into the family. And, uh, yeah, so that's, I'm going to, I'm going to send you some logos that, uh, I've got over here that, uh, my friend designed and have you take a look at them because, uh, I don't know, he might be able to join the team. Yeah. Any any way anybody wants to contribute to the show is more than welcome. And, or, or, you know, we could always, you know, super cool if you just share the show also. Yeah. No, this, this show is value for value, you know, share whatever value you have, you know, time, talent, you know, it's, it's, it means a lot. We like, I don't know how to articulate it. Right. We see the downloads, you know, so it's not like you're, you're at a concert hall and you see the audience, you know, so we know you're out there, you know, we hear you out there. Um, it's really nice to know you're out there and it's really cool to see those numbers growing. It's really cool to see the jumps in the numbers and the spikes in the downloads. And you're wondering like what out there caused this? Cause clearly that's you guys out there sharing and interconnecting and, and putting us on another level. So, um, you're doing it and thank you because. Wisdom should be free. And yeah, uh, I, on to that should be free, Bill. I, I will do the, 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 the selfless, shameless uh, plug. I mean, that is do support your local podcaster. Uh, on, on at least my end, I've got, I'm, I'm 90% sure you're not going to be able to catch this, but uh, there's a annoying high frequency uh, feedback hum. I've got some RF seeping into my system. I suspect it's through a cable I need to replace. So um, payday, that's going to be on order. Uh, if that isn't the issue, I'm going to be needing to add in some uh, sound scrub. Not sound scrubbing. What am I trying to say? It's um, um, it essentially goes on your power. It cleans your power as it comes in and removes any you know um, 
you know, RF frequencies that are being pumped in through the lines. So uh, I've got a couple of options like that on the future. And obviously, you know, I'd love to get a set up, um, you know, recording, you know, a separate signal on your end and just, um, you know, boosting up your ability to monitor yourself live while you're going out there. Um, I got high expectations for the show, Bill, and they're all about making it sound better and make it being a better uh, listening experience out there. So if you want to make that happen, if you want to make the show better, then that's my shameless plug to you because um, I've upgraded my computer on my own dime and I'm super happy with it. Um, but that <laughs> that stretched my my uh, the lengths of my income until uh, until I can get some more cables. But anyways, support the show, help it sound better, um, help get Bill a mixer, and tell your friends because, you know, really, we're just trying to keep your ears from bleeding and, you know, deliver some wisdom that hopefully is going to help you navigate the world better than you currently do. Or maybe show you how not to navigate it, which is just as good. Yeah, be a part of the magic. Um, if you're oh. going to share the show, you can you can find us on gab at 13 questions uh, the telegram is t.me slash 13 questions which is spelled out on gab is just one three questions and on discord is also one three questions um, email address is one three questions podcast at gmail.com website is 13 questions podcast.com and Alan will be uh, helping out with the website and probably doing some other social media-esque things, hopefully. So maybe some more updates to come on that. Check end. them out. Support them. Support those that are close to you. Help the people around you. And let's get the good vibes growing. And he's got a good angle on marketing. He's not the guy that wants to market your soul away. He wants to market you um, the best and the quality. And, you know, that's not everybody out there. So um, that's why we're joining on. It's not even like that. This is a, this is a brother of, of uh, Bill. I mean, I don't want to call him your family, but, uh, you know. Yeah, he's we, a we, close personal friend. Yeah, we. Yeah. And that's what we do. We we support you. You support us. We support friends. And at the end, you know, we we try to make sure that you know we're not a holes, and you know our our morals line up, and we all do better together. So um, support him. Um, and we shall see. Right, he's supporting us. So um, you'll get to see what he can do just by watching us. Yeah, and. I think that takes care of the housekeeping on the social media end. Like there's uh, really no shout outs to give, but uh, I will more than willing to, if you want to interact with the show on any of the socials, uh, the Gab account is up to 215 followers. So that's kind of exciting. That is really and exciting. Most of it, all of it. I, I know I don't sound really excited about that. No. Because I'm not super into social media anymore, but no, right. it is. You know, all these are just different avenues and different ways to reach out and and grab um, new people, and and hopefully, you know, within doing that, you know, seed along some some knowledge and nuggets and useful memes along the way. And if you want to be even more of a part of the magic, you can submit your own recording for an episode if you have somebody that you think has some wisdom worth sharing and memorializing uh, and you want to sit down and have a conversation with it, uh, with them and uh, send it into us. We can yep. uh, make it into Listen, an episode. And as long as the audio is airable, we're going to do it. And there is a lot I can do behind the scenes. If you're super scared, just send me like a five minute clip of a test. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. I'll see if I can't clean it up or give you a couple of tips and we'll make it work. If you have an iPhone, proper room conditions, you can make a podcast. So, um, you know, the sky is the limit. Just call me, tell me, find me on Discord, email me, you know, whatever whatever linkage you have to get in my direction. Um, we'll talk about it. And, you know, I say it a lot. 
we've only got so many avenues to knowledge. So you're just another avenue, another way to pull in um, the questions. And that's that's really cool that it, it it brings people access to, you know, a little chunk of knowledge from the universe that they never would have had before. And you're that vector. So feel free to contact me. Yeah, and if you don't want to do a recording, you can always just put whoever, like, your guest. Or guest suggestions, them, absolutely. Yeah, with us. Absolutely. I put through forth a few to Bill that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if we get any traction on, and you should do the same, because I'm telling you, Bill is going to listen to your request much more than mine. Well, no, I get equal. No, you should. To you should. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's interesting to see who I get responses back when I do reach out. It's fun. I'm just having a blast with the show. But. Yeah. And the worst that can happen is we can ask. So yeah, I mean, if we wanted Bill Gates on, we should ask Bill Gates on. So do you want to do a little jingle segment now then? So Bill, I heard you say magic a little bit earlier. Magic. Magic. Yes, you said magic. Yes, thank you, Mr. Sir Felix. Find him in the show notes. Donate, buy his music, go find his Christmas tunes, his ukulele tunes, his synthesizer tunes. Uh, always, always fun. And if you listen to the Grimerica show, you already know who he is. So buy something else. Buy his new stuff. Buy the jingle. This should really be a ringtone. It should. I think, you know, I had that idea. We should put it up on the website and, uh, like, Give Felix 50% of whatever, you know, proceeds from downloading it or whatever. All for it. Yeah. We'll have to work that out. Um, Yeah, gratitude. So, Uh, yeah, my gratitude is something that I keep brushing upon, but certainly was reinforced by this episode. And it's just magic, showing magic to yourself. It's, It's doing something in the world for yourself, you know, when you didn't think it was possible, you didn't think there was a reason to do it. And then all of a sudden the universe forces you into a situation where you just go out and do it. Well, for me, it's doing something that you shouldn't be able to do. So, you know, it's always, I, I, my, my references are like remote viewing or dowsing or tarot or something that you're told should not work. Okay, we'll take this. Anything that anybody's ever told you, forget it, right? Because I found tarot, throwing cards is the most uncanny and synchronistic thing that I've ever done on a regular basis. And so to me, experientially, there is something here. Okay, well, this is something that for my entire life, I considered to just be one of those things that people believed in. I never tried it. And most people won't try it who are of that mindset. And there's a lot of people who feel that there's some sort of negativity to it. But if you open yourself to one thing, so find the experience, whether it's in tarot or just bent wires holding in your hand, walking around, you know, or something that, haha, this is something that's not supposed to be real, but I know it is. Now with that experience, push it into everything else because when you start to realize that there is so much more infinitely beyond what you think is possible, When you hear people say things that are crazy, well, could there be a benefit if you believe in it? Okay. Well, what else did you not believe in before? That could have been completely impossible. That to this day, there is no explanation for. Well, do you need an explanation? How about you just need to know if it works? So why don't you try if it works? Oh my gosh, you're doing mantras and they work? Okay. Well, good luck trying to figure out how it works. But if you're benefiting from it, then why would you ever stop? And why would you be fearful of trying something new? So I don't know. It's 
It's just that magic that if you can latch on to one experience that nobody or the majority of people tell you is not a reality, that you can just in your own self go, I know you're not right, and I know there's more out there. And then if you can just let that unlock the infinite of anything, um, that's what I am most grateful for. And um, I, I don't know, I'm, just, I'm grateful to be able to see that reflected in other people. I love that you talked about magic and because it it goes right into my gratitude. It has to do with CAC contact at the Canyon. Cause that was a whole magical event. The world is magic and people forget that. And people look at things and don't understand. Just look at the technology around you. I'm sitting here in front of a computer, a recorder, wireless keyboard, my, multiple monitors, all this stuff is hooked up. All right. But at some point in time, there was no technology. There was human beings and rocks. And through the thought of somebody's mind and envisioning something that could be done over and over and refining those thoughts over generations, you have what has been built by hand, has been literally lifted out of the dirt, amalgamized and created into this thing that we're now utilizing. And that is magic. And when you just take something as simple as that and go, yeah, you what can your mind do? What is your mind capable of? You know, the infinite, you know, yeah, maybe there's a slow burn. Maybe you're not going to get the end result, but you're going to be contributing along that timeline. And I don't know that, that just excites me to look at the world that way. And, and I, I try to encourage as many other people to try to find just those magical things that they can latch onto. Because, you know, if, if you think about like the medieval person and the possibility of what's just in a room around you and with modern technology, whether it be, you know, the ability to get food or travel, you know, or, you know, get potable water, you know, these would all be miracles beyond, you know, you know, anything in historic life, especially on a global scale. So push your mind as far forward into any reality because it's my belief that it is all possible and we're capable of making that reality happen. We just have to believe in it. So I don't know where I was going with that bill, but God damn it. My computer is magic and it made out of dirt. I sound like Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah. Being at contact at the Canyon cabin where we were at canyons uh, this year was just like a huge reminder about that aspect of reality because all, all these people that showed up for this get together, it was more than just a meetup. It felt like a reunion, really. And especially after being and everything shut down for the last year, like this trip was postponed. Like, oh, yeah. Like, there's got to be so much anticipatory energy and nervousness that's just, you know, yeah, in addition, piped into it. To come together oh, yeah. The release in person. It was just otherworldly. And it I mean, it was like, you know, you just got that vacation high for like two weeks afterwards. Right. And it's just to have that memory and to be able to do that in a time when there's so much division in the world and to be able to come together without all that and to meet all these people I like formed a relationship with over the internet over the last few years. I it's just, it was, the whole thing was just mind blowing. And then the breath work with Brandon. Powell oh, Brandon's awesome. Canyons. Yeah. I have audio yeah. recordings of him. Yeah. Listen, People should look into the Wim Hof method, especially if you have ailments, um, the things you can do with healing, pumping up your body. I myself have held my breath for excess of five minutes. Um, you know, the, the amount of years that I've, I've spent on and off smoking is a miracle. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, you called it a unworldly bill. I'm contact yeah. at the cabin to me in the same line of my gratitude was life altering in perspective because when we went up there, I don't know if anybody had any experiences like this, but it was, I, f I forget which night it was because I was up there for the duration of all the groups that stayed, but we were outside me and one other guy, it was like two or three in the morning. And all of a sudden we looked up and there was hundreds of individual lights all strung together, kind of surrounded almost in like some sort of like thin membrane or bag at the edge of the horizon. And everything was kind of pulling apart 
And at the time I didn't, I didn't catch it, but somebody described it as like a sky worm. And that's how the, the individual lights were separating. And it was, it was massive. It was completely unearthly. It was, and it didn't even look mechanical. It looked biological and it just opened me up to so many different possibilities. And that experience was really, really beneficial because to me, it felt, it looked like some sort of large worm, energy worm, or some sort of like, it looked like it was biological. It, it looked alive. And just as, as quickly as it appeared, it faded away into the background. And there was a witness there with me to corroborate. And yeah, so contact at the cabin to me was life-changing from a, a UFO perspective. And, you know, did you guys go looking out for flash bulbs when you were out there? Yeah, we had a visitor show up. Awesome. Because we, we were out there, yeah, we got lots of flat, we got iridium satellites, but we got a lot of flash bulbs, you know, and that's freaking cool, man. Yeah, I didn't get to see it, but it was definitely something out there after David Matheson gave his star presentation. I was sitting in the truck afterwards, and the second group had come up because they had got stuck at the other location because somebody locked their keys in the car, but... Uh, so he was given the presentation like a fast forward, fast forwarded version because it was so cold and laid out. And I was sitting in the car and something, somebody said something outside and I didn't get out quick enough to see it. But the group by the car saw it and the group that was out by the observation point saw it also. Uh, I can't describe it because I didn't see it. But um, yeah, speaking of otherworldly things, that did happen. But, you know, another thing, and this is just a, a sideline into magic, you know, one of the, 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 the core themes that you'll see pop up is, you know, um, places of the in-between or, you know, outside the, the norm. So, you know, going to a place of crossroads that you don't normally frequent, you know, without people around. And if you can find these places and you put the intent on going out there and going out at night and looking into the sky. There are many who say that doing that intent, if you do this for a couple of weeks, very good chance that you will see something unworldly. It might not be what you're expecting to see. It might not be a classic light in the sky, but you will see something that changes your perspective. So, you know, whatever that means there, just want to put it out there for people and just focusing your on intent and trying to do new things. Um, that's certainly a core of, of what we talked about tonight on this episode. So... You know, whether you're thinking in a practical or in a magical sort of way, I think they they all function off the the base set of reality. So, yeah. So being at, at contact at the canyon was just that was my gratitude. That was That's awesome. Nice yeah, Bill. I'm sorry, I hijacked impression. your gratitude. No, what's wrong uh, with I mean, me? That was a, I can't that have two was gratitudes. A, I can't have your gratitude too. <laughs> sorry, uh, that was just a it was just a nice reminder, refresher of uh, you know what. What the gathering specifically, like what gathering together in numbers and in, in like a group does, like just like on a spiritual level, especially when you've been mm -hmm. locked up or you know, so we've been purposely kept separated this whole time to come together and do that is kind of like bucking the system, right? Well, it is because nobody, you know, nobody there's it, it, you know, we're all hip to what's going on. So, no, you're it, just it putting was, energy into a different system, and that is yeah. a system of grouping together in public. Yeah, it's a difference. That's exactly right. So it's a different system. One system has said, no, we're pulling the energy out of that. And you're like, no, I'm putting the energy back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was like a shift in working with systems, I guess. Yeah. Was... Yeah. And everybody's yeah. got a different perspective on the world. I choose not to be fearful of things. And I, you know, understand that, you know, if I want my legs to be stronger, that means I need to do exercise and workouts that I don't like doing. So, you know, sometimes you just got to do things that you, yeah, I lost my train of thought there, Bill. There will be more contacts at the Canyon 
slash cabin. Yes, the look, I know that look, they're, they're magical. One right now, so. they're magical, and the coolest thing is, is you get to sit around and talk to these people. You're not just learning the Wim Hof method from Brandon Powell. You're hanging out with Brandon Powell. You're hanging out with Randall Carlson. You're hanging out with Matheson. You know, you're sitting down with dinner and drinks, or doing whatever, going out and gazing underneath the stars. It's literally whatever you choose to do. You're living at the same location with them, bunking together. It's like summer camp in which the counselors are hanging out with the kids. You know what I mean? It's, you know, nobody's the boss. We're all adults here. We're here to learn. We're here to share knowledge. We're here to commune. And it is about community. And yeah, it's, it's beautiful. This was the first contact at the cabin that I was not at. So, um, yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. I encourage people to go. Yes. It's, it's, it's so worthwhile. Do it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's magical. And the cool thing is, is the roots of it were literally just started in Cyrus saying, hey, I want a cabin. Uh, I want to hang out with you guys. If I get it, you know, can we all go hang out there for, you know, a weekend? And he rented it out and boom, next thing you know, this becomes a regular thing with, I mean, gosh, some of the great thinkers of our time, or at least that's how they'll be remembered in my mind. Yeah, it's definitely a unique opportunity to take advantage of. And uh, so we have one more housekeeping item to touch on before jumping into the interview, and that is Shungite. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have our affiliate link up on the site. Uh, it's not really getting too much traction. I did log in to listen. This is this is value day. for value, Bill. Right? If you need it, value the value of the product, if you feel this is valuable to you when you need it, you may not need it now, but if you do. Boom, pop it in. We benefit, he benefits, you benefit, we all benefit. But anyways, right, yeah, the Shungite like score is pretty some, cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty well, it's laying pretty low right now, which is fine, but I just think that it's we still mention it on the show because it is a benefit. I mean it's been beneficial to us. So mm -hmm. value for value, we want to pass that on to you. So there's the Shungite plug. Um, absolutely. I'll, I'll even put out a, another one that, you know, if you don't have the money to donate and you're interested in the benefits of Shungite, I'll even mail you a piece of Shungite if you request. Yeah, use the social value for value. Yeah, just re reach out because, you know, I, I can't speak to the metaphysical end or a scientific end. I can speak to a personal and placebitic end at the very least. And I like the way it feels it, it, uh, it lowers the pressure in my chest and oddly, you know, somewhere between seven and nine o'clock, all of a sudden it becomes annoying and bothersome and I have to take it off. And when I take it off, I feel another pressure release. So I do not know what that means, um, but it looks cool and it, it feels beneficial to me. So I don't know. I, I'd call it grounding if I had to choose a word. Good word. Yeah. So check that out. And, uh, I think with that, we can get into the yep. meat, get into the show. Let's yep. All right. Enjoy the chat with Alan Letson. Let's get into the first question then. What was the best advice ever given to you? Would you modify it at all today? So some of the best advice given to me, um, it's really come from all over. It's one of those things that everybody says, and that is be yourself and don't let other people get to you. I think that so often we become overwhelmed with the idea that we have to impress everyone when the reality is that we're never going to impress everyone. So when you kind of separate from that concern, you're able to do things more successfully. Yeah, for sure. Being yourself, that's like, I don't know. I like to call it not wearing, not wearing a mask and then not, not referring to the ones that we talk about today, but like that front that we put on and, 
before I got involved with 13 Questions, I spent all, over a year doing a live show on Cruising with Steak. And Grim Steak, the host over there, really taught me a lot about just being an honest person on air. Because, I mean, it's a live show and it's just a bunch of, you know, a bunch of friends basically having a conversation, right? So, yeah. Um, and it, you know, it just encouraged me to do that here, even I think, like prepared me for the show. And uh, yeah, so there's definitely some value in being yourself and not not wearing that, you know, putting on that fake facade that, you know, some people feel more comfortable doing or feeling like they have to, right? Because they're not comfortable in their own skin. Definitely. And like the fact knowing you personally, you know, makes it easier for this, this to be more natural and just, you know, you kind of know who I am and I know who you are. And when you're trying to impress someone, it's just a lot harder to, you know, keep that up and why not just be yourself. So definitely something that has really been the most consistent in my life. Right on. Question number two, what was the most important lesson you learned from your parents? I think the most important for me would be spending time with my family because you never know how little time you have. Uh, my dad having health issues and stuff is something that we never know what's going to come next. So we try to kind of optimize, you know, that time that we have with him and really just enjoy family all together. Yeah, for sure. Sp uh, spending quality family time. I think that's something that I try to do just about every Sunday with uh, my brother and, and my parents. Luckily we live close enough that we can do that sometimes, uh, not all the time. Depends on where I'm at from traveling or not, but yeah, uh, definitely spending time with your family is uh, something that we shouldn't take for granted. Question number three. What book has been most influential on your life and why? So this book was actually recommended to me by one of my old managers when I worked in a factory. And uh, it's called Getting the Blue Ribbon by Jones Laughlin. And this book has been so influential because it shows you that in any situation that you kind of have to take control of that situation to create the results that you want. So kind of a rundown of it is the uh, character of the book is given a new position of a kind of falling uh, department of the company and he has to turn it around. And through uh, his sister who grows uh, apples in an orchard, she you know wins prizes for at the fairs she kind of teaches him how they're grown and he uses those lessons from the orchard to take back to his business and create award winning results within the business so being an entrepreneur for me this has really been a foundation type book that gives me direction on how to keep things consistent and create those results up front. And who was the author by Joan? Jones Laughlin. Where did you, Jones. uh, where'd you come across that book at? Uh, so that book was recommended when I worked in a factory by one of my supervisors. How do you, how do you spell the last name? You know L O F L I N. I was way off. All right. <laughs> Question number four, what daily habits or rituals do you have? So some people do this at night, but for me, it's a morning shower. I have. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Go on. So every morning, the first thing I do, like I get up out of bed and like, I just have to take a shower. It's my way to reset and get ready for the day. And I know this is annoying, but I literally take two showers a day because one, the, the morning I just get up, it's like my cup of coffee. I don't drink a lot of coffee, so I'll just take a shower and I can just decompress, think. And it, it's just like my meditation is, you know, the water and it's relaxing. So, but then at the end of the day, after working and having kids, you know, shower and just kind of reset for the night. So that is my daily ritual that is very consistent. 
is a morning shower. Has that been something that you've always had, like going to school when you were younger? It was, it was always shower in the morning before school then, or? I think this was more uh, post high school that I started doing this uh, just because I, it was just kind of that morning habit that I wanted to start is just, it's time. I know I have myself. I can think I can do what I want. And like I said, it's a weird habit, but it's definitely a good one for me because it's kind of like a time to review my task for the day and kind of think about like what I've got going on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was just comparing to, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's weird if a lot of people take showers in the morning and I think it is, I don't know. I don't know if Adam's experience, you know, what his experience in this is, but like, as we get older, that was something that changed in me was that I would take showers in the morning as opposed to in the evening. Like, I don't know. No, yeah, I, mine was always an evening shower when I was in school. Yeah. I find it interesting though, that there's these things that people do regularly that they don't consider to be ritual. So you find meaning in this and there could be other people that don't even realize that it's something that's benefiting them on, you know, a, a pattern basis. So yeah, it's just kind of uh, interesting. I always like when people pick up the mundane of like sitting and drinking a cup of coffee or, you know, taking a shower. Yeah. And I don't think that many people think about those little things on a day to day basis, because like you said, you know, those simple moments, that's really where our day is. And if we get caught up in, you know, where we have to be next instead of appreciating where we're at now, then it it gets lost. Yeah. I think, you know, just anything, having a morning ritual is is awesome. And yours is a shower, which is, which is cool. So yeah, just as I think it's important, just as long as some people or as as long as people incorporate some kind of ritual, you know, definitely kind of makes everything go smoother. But uh, yeah, I don't know if you can incorporate uh, baths, but I take salt. I take salt baths, not every day, but uh, I try to do it. You know, like once a month. It's good for detoxing. And that's the best way to get magnesium. Too. So, if you're talking about meditation, yeah. And what about magnesium? Oh, what? magnesium. Uh, when I was seeing my neurologist, you know, the number one cause of migraines is magnesium deficiency, followed by weather. So his, you know, recommendation was take an Epsom salt bath. It's the best way to get it absorbed into your system. Which on the flip side, just uh, think about all the bath chemicals you put in and what soaks into you too. That's definitely something that I never thought about. I took my first salt bath like a month ago, I think. And it was the most relaxing bath because it, it just changes the chemical of the water. Like, Obviously, you think water's water, but when you think about going through like the city system and stuff, there's so much more in that. But literally, the Epsom salts make it so relaxing. Like there is a weird difference there. Yeah, and it's cheap too. Like I use, I buy them from from the online online, and they get like a five pound bag, and that lasts me you know a pretty long time. And I think it's from Dead Sea actually, Dead Sea salt, which. Derek, who's the one that recommended dead sea salt as opposed to like regular Epsom salt. But anyway, either way works. And like the first time I did it, it was kind of like I had, I don't know, almost like passed out because the salt like detoxes your body so much. Like I got my head got really warm and breathing got kind of difficult and like I started sweating and yeah, I don't know. It was, but, but yeah, it was relaxing after, after like the first 20 minutes, right? Question number five. If I were to ask your best friend, what is the one thing they would say you need to work on the most and why? I think, Bill, I think you know the answer to this one because it's my biggest flaw, and that is communication. I am so terrible at it because anxiety, running my own business, having kids, I am all over the place. And all my emails for all my different business accounts go to my cell phone as well. So I, you can send me a text message and I'll be in the middle of something, glance at it and forget, you know, five minutes later that I have to respond. It's the same way with, you know, Facebook messages, anything like that, which is why like 
for me, communication is just, it's not a hassle and I don't mind talking to people, but I just forget. And it's just such a terrible habit for me. It's just forgetting that I have to respond to messages and emails are easy. I can respond to those, but text and phone calls, that's where I lose it. Yeah, it seems like there's with the more ways that there are for people to get a hold of us, like as individuals, like it's just it, it can get overwhelming because there's so many different avenues, too many like apps to keep up with or whatnot, right? Yeah, I've even got like on my website, I've got a link where you can chat instantly with me, which goes to my cell phone. So if you're sitting there, you know, in the middle of the afternoon on my website, say, hey, I have a question. I'll have that pop up on my phone and I may not answer instantly, but, you know, it still goes kind of back and forth that way. So on top of text, social media, it's one of those many forms of communication that you just kind of have to have out there, but it also makes it a little bit more difficult to get back as fast. All right. Question number six. What are you most curious about? My biggest curiosity would be everything. The, to me, knowledge is power, and I think that there's so much to be known out there that the more you're curious about and want to learn about, the more you can kind of be successful at the different obstacles in your life. Yeah, uh, knowledge that reminds me of kind of, uh, what is it? It's, you get grammar, rhetoric, and... Logic or the the three the trivium, right? And knowledge is kind of like the grammar portion of that equation, right? So you're 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 learning about expanding expanding your your sphere of of awareness, right? And then you kind of go into the two other steps, which is like analyzing it. And, and and then uh, you know being able to teach it to other people, right? But the knowledge portion specifically is is important because it allows us to have a wider perspective of the spectrum. So everybody's reality reality tunnel is different, right? So the more that we can uh, see different reality tunnels, especially in regards to the same subject, the more we can expand our knowledge base and. Yeah, so being curious about everything and, and not close-minded about about anything is a good way to do that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, everyone's different in their perspectives. And I think too often we forget that people are raised differently, come from different backgrounds, and you know, just have different personalities than we do. And just being curious about who they are as a person, what business you're working for, and what their culture is. There's so many different things to learn out there that when you focus more on learning who someone is or what something is, you appreciate it more. Yeah. And you'll, you being open-minded and, 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 and curious, like the other day, like yesterday I was walking around the farmer's market and I wasn't really looking to get into a conversation about corn, but we got into a conversation about corn. Uh, this guy was selling, uh, heirloom popcorn kernels uh, and the, the, the corn was actually a plant that's native to you know this area and uh, if you guys remember that I think it was called a derecho a storm that came through uh, a few months ago and it flattened a bunch of crops out in Iowa and tons of farmers lost money and uh, well this crop was able to stand back up after that storm because it's a native plant and, and it was you know, it's attuned to the environment as opposed to all these GMO corn crops that got obliterated, right? So, like, I don't know anything about any of that. And now it's kind of cool to know that the indigenous species of corn is, like, making a comeback, right? So, yeah. Very cool. Just another tangent, but yeah. Hey, Bill. Number, can yeah. you give me just uh, 30 seconds? I want to try to isolate some feedback I'm getting real quick. Okay, give me I'm just... going to close some windows too, so give me a moment. We'll just keep this part in here and plug that it's Valley for Valley show and 
if people want to help us with the expense cost of that wire, <laughs> they can go to 13questionspodcast.com and send us a few bucks. I, I should send a photo of the, uh, the multi-mixer setup that makes everything happen on this end for all of the magic to come together. Donate $10 and get a free sticker. That's right. Donate 20 and get two stickers. Get two, you get a sticker, we get a cable. Everybody wins. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, we'll definitely come up with something fun to, to push that out. Yeah, and uh, no joke, it's probably going to be like $20, $25 in cable adapters because it's got to go from quality quarter inch mono, two of those down into some RCA jacks. And it's always nice to do it without adapters like I'm using. And I'm pretty sure one of them my mom gave me when I was a kid, 3.5 millimeter adapter going into two other adapters. So it's kind of shame on me. But it's... It's okay now, though, right? Oh, no, I still have the feedback, but it is what it is. Worst case scenario, we'll bounce over to the Zoom recording. I'm 90% sure I can pull it all out and post. Um, if not, um, but I think I can, and I think I can show you how to do it too, Bill. It's just going to need an expander and a compressor run on it before it goes out. Okay. All right, well, uh, we were on question number seven. What was the most embarrassing or humbling experience of your life? So the roughest moment of my life, I would say, um, this is more like a more recent thing for me, was when I decided to show up at my scheduled work time as an assistant manager, uh, and the store manager decided to show up and cussed me out because I entered the store alone. And uh, that was a moment where I decided to resign from a assistant manager position in retail and get closer to starting my business. So it was the little boot you needed to uh, kind of, the catalyst that you needed to follow what you wanted to do, like your dreams, right? So I think that was, Kind of a common theme in 2020, actually. But yeah, so what are you doing now then? Yeah, so uh, this happened in October of 2019. Uh, and then I worked in a factory for a couple of months. And I actually got fired from that factory because I got sick. And uh, I missed like so many days within my first 90 days that they fired me. Which that was kind of the moment where my wife and I talked to each other. And she kind of agreed to let me have a trial run at having my own business officially full time. And uh, now I'm running Beast Marketing full time. Isn't it nice how the universe kind of pushes you into things sometimes? It's like, uh, no, you couldn't follow your dreams until you really had no option. It seems cliche, but the universe will make it happen. And... I think that if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And like I said, it sounds so cliche, but the outcome always ends up being the way it should be. It just may have a few extra steps that hurt along the way. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not always, you know, feel good. Oh, hey, uh, through something, through no control of your own means you and your family cannot eat. And you're going to run into problems with guys with guns if you stay where you're at. Like that, that's not a good feeling to get. But ultimately, it gave you the best feeling ever by allowing you to do what you wanted to do to begin with. Definitely. It's cool. And it's, it was, you know, a big challenge in those first six months. And there's challenges all along the way, especially with doing things more independently because – in my type of business, there's so much knowledge that has to kind of be obtained to reach certain goals in marketing. And the information is constantly changing where something that's valid today, tomorrow could be completely obsolete. So it's one of those extra challenges that, you know, when you get that boo and you have those obstacles that uh, luckily enough for me, I started in a pandemic and had a lot of those lessons up front. 
but still that boot got me to where I'm at and I appreciate it. So beast marketing, when people hear like, okay, you and I have talked like we're, we're you're going to help us out with stickers for the show, but when people hear marketing company, like what exactly do you like, what, what does that mean for people that are not familiar? So I think when people hear the term marketing, they think that, oh, this person just advertises and that's true. But what they don't realize a lot of the time is that marketing is such a broad industry that includes everything from promotional products, apparel, custom graphics for your vehicle, all the way to branding and creating a identity for a company including the logo, the color schemes, uh, the theming around what their business is going to be. And that's really kind of what beast marketing is, is we are a beast. It's I have a network of suppliers that work with me to get the best products on the industry. And if we can take your business and put the image to the public, that's our biggest goal. We just want to unleash your brand on the public and help you succeed because in marketing, if your clients aren't successful, then you're not successful because that's what your job is, is to, you know, get them more business. Yeah, it, it sounds like a, such an interesting field to, to to have as like your daily job. It just seems like always, always something new. You know, it's never like the same, like, you know, I've, some people have very repetitive jobs. That doesn't seem like one of them. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't focus on any parallels or uh, any specific column when it comes to what clients I serve because really there's such a variety out there that if you want a marketing company that specifically deals with hospitals, you can find one. But they're going to give you the same thing that they give five other hospitals in your area. And you're going to be stuck with the same marketing campaign. And when you have a company that is so broad you have different ideas that kind of cross over that you can take from a haunted attraction in one state and say hey this worked really good for this type of client how can we apply it to this over here and it keeps your options more broad and gives you a better success rate question number eight what is your greatest fear and how did you overcome it if you have? My biggest fear is and probably always be failure. Um, and this is ironic that going from saying that it's important not to worry about what others say and just be yourself. But my biggest obstacle has always been failure. I'm always worried that, you know, something isn't going to be quite the way it should be. And I strive for that perfection, which can in turn, you know, create more obstacles for me, but we overcome them. And the biggest way that I've overcome, you know, being that fear of failure is just by really simplifying my life. And, you know, I have like five main areas that I focus on in my life, which are my personal life my family life, my social life, my business life. And in those areas, if that's all I'm worrying about, then I have less to fail at because I know how to be myself. I know how to be a husband, a father, a son, a brother. I know how I want to run my business. And when I do things my way, that helps me kind of overcome the possibility of failing in those terms. So what you're saying is that you kind of limit your focus to the areas that you can have direct kind of uh, impact on, right? Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that's helped me overcome that is focusing on those main areas in life. Yeah. Cause you, I mean, you can't, I mean, that's all you can control. So why, why not put all your energy there? It makes sense to me. Question number nine. What quality do you most admire in a man? Why? I think the most important to the thing to me is humility. Um, 
we are all human. Life happens, life changes. And if you come in to a situation thinking that you're better than anyone else, I think that automatically sets you behind. And really, there's a difference between confidence and uh, arrogance. I think that's what I was looking for. And when you come in there and you can be kind of humbled and be yourself and be open to those conversations, understand people's situations. I think that that really creates a stronger person as a man. Yeah. I like the confidence versus arrogance angle on there. I mean, there's, it's two aspects of, I don't know, not the same coin or whatever, but you can, arrogance, I mean, you, you can be kind of uh, close-minded and think that you know everything. Uh, and But you, the, the, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have, to, you have to be that way to be confident, right? Definitely. And I think for me, like, I say that knowledge is, you know, power to me. And it's one of the best things that anyone can do is just be curious about things. But when it comes to, you know, people like I don't know anything, tell me, let me learn, let me take the opportunity to better myself through you and let me help you through my lessons. Yeah, I, I love that. Whenever I ask, you know, and trying to learn something from anybody for the first time, I always have to tell them to explain it to me like I'm five years old, right? Because you know, just being teachable. And uh, I think maybe sometimes people aren't used to that. And, and so they, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had a thought there. Squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Question number 10, who were your role models and why, or who, where slash are your role models and why? So one of my biggest role models right now is Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, if you don't know who he is and you haven't heard him, then uh, stop this podcast and go and then come back so you can kind of understand this more. But really, it's his self-awareness and really just going hard on that. You know, we're human. We all make mistakes. We are all going to learn. And the biggest thing being that you can start now, but if it fails, you can go back to something else. You have time. I love that answer. I forgot, I completely forgot about this guy. But as soon as you said the name, like it popped back in my memory. That guy is great. Uh, Adam, do, are you familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk? Not at all. He's some, uh, his family, I think he's from like Russia, right? He's an immigrant, isn't he, Alan? And he came over and like built this gigantic marketing company. He's like his own wine company now. And he just started out by like, I don't just selling like retail, right? Basically. So he came in from, uh, Wow. And it's so ironic because he mentions it all the time, like where he came from. It's from Russia, uh, isn't he? So it's, if it's not Russia, it's one of those Russians. Born in Belarus. He's born in Belarus. So uh, he came to America and he, uh, as a kid, he kind of worked in his family's wine shop and was able to kind of build a interest in collecting wines or learning that people collect wines because he was collecting sports cards. And over time, he just became skilled at that customer service and that connection and really just took all his life and kind of built up his knowledge. But one thing he did was he started, uh, I believe it was the wine library. And I, I have no idea why this was all escaping me now, but, uh, Look up Gary V and you'll know who he is. Yeah, but he's got a YouTube channel. YouTube, podcast, he's got everything. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be in a smaller group of individuals to do a virtual Q&A session with him during one of my uh, 
virtual trade shows I attended and it was, you know, so much knowledge in there. And the guy is just so down to earth and, you know, it's like you're talking to a friend. Very cool. Yeah. I remember watching some of his YouTube videos. They're, they're, you should check him out, especially he's just like a good motivational speaker too. Right. Like he just makes you want to get up and, and, and do it kind of like that Shia LaBeouf video where he's like, get up, you know, just do it. Right. It yeah. Gives, gives off that kind of energy. All right. Question number 11, what institution of society or structural aspect of modern life would you change given the chance? So this one is a touchy subject uh, just for everyone in society right now, because it's hopefully a short term problem and hopefully will change. But I think that through this pandemic, many individuals have become too comfortable with the idea of unemployment and those unemployment benefits. And I think that for those of us, you know, when I got fired, I could have filed for unemployment, but instead I started a business. Uh, your company altered for the work from home aspect. And there's so many people out there that have the opportunity to either start a business, go back to school or do something that they're kind of stuck on that unemployment, which is leading to so many businesses that just can't stay open. And if you look at any store in our area, their hours are altered because they're focusing on those, you know, few hours that they are able to be open because they don't have the employees. Wait, so you're saying that the unemployment people being on it is hurting the businesses from being open, right? Is that what you're yeah, getting at? So when I think that unemployment is fueling a short term, hopefully, period of just laziness and it's not to say like i know there's people out there that honestly can't work or there's reasons that they you know stay home because maybe if they were out and got covid that it could affect one of their family members and i get that but i think that there is a majority that is not in that situation because you're not required to get to report all that information like you would have before so where unemployment's not a bad thing it's a good safety net to have. I think the current setup of how it has changed in the last year is more uh, fueling to that kind of lazy society and affecting businesses. Yeah, I think you're right. I know we're at my place of business having an incredibly hard time finding good people, people that are just going to show up for the job interview, basic type of stuff. And it's across the board. Everybody that we deal in business with is going through the exact same thing. So there's a shortage of quality worker out there. And when you get people in, you're a lot of it is just low hanging fruit. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really, really changed. How, I mean, obviously how people are perceiving, you know, the amount of work that they're willing to do for what they get back. I agree with that. And when, when you're in that situation, I think it's only going to make things worse unless you get proactive. And, you know, there's so many companies out there right now mm -hmm. that are hiring, you know. It's a great time to get work and to find new positions and places. And it's really a problem that was created just by the fact that, you know, we have so many people that are working at big box, you know, businesses paying minimum wage, not doing, you know, full time hours. People can't live on a full time job or two part time, or you know, even you know, like two part time jobs. So we're subsidizing it with the government. So you already have, you know, a group of people that were in a position where they weren't making enough to survive. Now all of a sudden they're put into a position where they're finally able to take care of their family. So it's even this weird thing where you can't even blame people when the options being given before them are better than a failed system before. So it's such a complicated thing. But if you have the gumption and you're willing to go out there, so many companies are looking for people that uh, damned your qualifications, you know, show your interest, show your smarts, show your adaptability. 
I I agree. And there's people out there, so many companies that don't even offer a higher on bonus normally. They've got them, you know, advertised, you know, three hundred dollar sign on five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars just for signing on. And uh, you know, the rates that some of these people are hiring is incredible because for Indiana, we're at a seven twenty five, I think, for the minimum wage. And there's so many businesses out there that could be paying 725, but you come on and they'll pay you 20, 25 bucks just to start. And I think that people mm-hmm. who aren't taking that advantage of that opportunity are really missing out on, you know, a good future. Yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of cool uh, because it used to be, you know, when you were a teenager over the summer, you could make some real money doing part-time work, mowing lawns, pressure washing, doing that kind of, you know, side work. And that all evaporated out. It, you just couldn't deal with the the amount of businesses out there doing it. Now, all these businesses, like you said, everybody I know, they're looking to start people off at $25 an hour. No prior training. All you got to be able to do is hustle hard in the sun and, you know, be friendly to customers and be able to, you know, learn how to do something and do it repetitively. And I mean, that's pretty good money for starting out, especially, you know, uh, these are a lot of businesses that if you get it on the ground level like that and you learn it, save up enough to buy a trailer and you just got to license yourself and you're doing the same thing. Like there's big money in this. So yeah, I guess I'm just jumping on board, you know, with people to just consider that you can really jump in on board on the ground level now for a lot of businesses because there's just a lot of people for whether it be fear or better opportunity, um, you know, just like you, you know, find something that interests you and go for it. I think that I just had like the most obnoxious idea, but in, in all honesty, like five years from now, if I was hiring someone and I saw this on their resume, like I could understand it. But I think that now with so many people hiring and so few options that now is the perfect time to go out there and take on two different part-time jobs, three part-time jobs, whatever works for you, try them. And if you don't like them, be like, hey, look, I appreciate the time, but it's not working. And choose which one of those jobs works best for you. I mean – People at least get some help for a little bit. And even though it's not the most up. Wow. It's not the best, you know, situation for the employer. I think that the employee at least has a chance to learn, you know, what's going to be best for them and help them secure a more lasting job. Yep. And overvalue yourself. Take whatever you think you're worth and add on to it. And don't be afraid of too much because you got to understand that these people are already looking to know they have to pay more. So you might as well price yourself high. Definitely. It's a, it's a worker's market out there. Chance to be creative too. You know, take advantage of, cause we're in uncertain times, but all it means is it's, it's things are changing and there's some people are going to take advantage of that and start their own business, like a marketing company. Right. Well, or, and yeah. And like you do, like, so you're saying things change every day. Look, if you got free time, start ch- taking a look at the market and what's going on and try to get ahead of trends and maybe doing developing on marketing. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, the, this is a huge R and D money logistical thing, but Hey, if you could produce Silicon for chips right now, boom, you would be, the biggest booming company in America because we have no silicon refinery. We're getting all of our stuff from China. We're running out of resins. There's all these logistical things that are starting to come up. And, you know, if we can start finding ways and, you know, things around it in this new market, yeah, you can really get in on the ground level of new businesses and new creation and doing things in a different way, maybe with different materials or through a different modality. And you've got the chance to really upend things and change it. So yeah, it's, su- it's a super exciting time and, you know, that might be just something as simple as being able to, you know, create jewelry with, with supplies you have. It doesn't even have to be jewelry. You can take an old boot, cover it in cement and call it a flower pot. And I think that, like you said, you know, there's just so much opportunity mm-hmm. and 
why why not? Especially with the internet, I mean, the market is huge. Like, if you're going to sell the flower pot boot, you know, you need a market, right? Instead of sitting, you know, having a garage sale and sitting out side of your house waiting for people to drive by you have the internet i mean and there's so much information and potential there it's easy to to be creative now easier than it was you know when you didn't have the internet do you know the two different types of learning you can do at any type of seminar or lecture just any type of learning active Mm -mm. and non-active i don't know what is it (laughs) You can learn the right way to do something and what's working, or you can learn what not to do. And it's all personal perspective on what is right and what's wrong, but you can always learn if something's, if you look online and start learning something, watch YouTube videos, write down the notes of every time you catch yourself saying, why would you do that when you could do this? Because even though they're not teaching you something that you think is useful, you're reminding yourself of something that is useful. Yeah, and you're 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 interjecting your own part, little piece of creativity into that advice. You're just adapting it to fit your own particular situation. Yeah, it's awesome. Question twelve: What is the most courageous thing you've ever done or seen in your life? I think that the most courageous thing has really been, you know, last year starting my own business and officially launching Beast Marketing. It's an LLC. It's a sole proprietorship. It's a financial risk. And with two young kids and a wife, it's really scary. And I think even more so that now I've just started my uh, Beast 5 summer sweepstakes and stuff. But with that, we have so many things that I'm putting out there that I spent months and literally just meeting after meeting on the phone, video chats and in person, building a network of vendors that I can work with to make sure that when my product is coming out, you get it in a timely manner, you get a good quality product. Uh, I have the knowledge to get you the right pricing that is going to work for your company and help you fit your budget to those needs. And all that time that, you know, this, any time I'm spending on knowledge is time that's money wasted. It's, you know, I'm not getting as much money coming in. So it's a financial risk, you know, to educate myself, but being where I'm at, I've taken the risk to, optimize you know that knowledge Mm -hmm. optimize my customer base to really meet both of those and grow a successful you know startup i think that in the next year i'll be where i want to be as a business and start setting those new goals yeah and you and you did it in 2020 right that's when you started so it's been over, over a year now about a year just over a year, I started it. February 22nd was the day that I became an established business. And uh, the biggest thing about that was that I started it just a month before everything shut down. Hmm. So your COVID cliff was like a COVID trench. Like a lot of businesses refer to a you know, COVID cliff. Or was it a perfect opportunity to, you know, trudge ahead and find, you know, new grounds? Like you didn't have anything already built up. So, you know, you're coming in right as things are starting to change with everybody. So, I mean, was it a leg up maybe too? Kind of a, because I know at where I'm at, we are busier than ever. And it's just because the market on everything has changed and with our competitors and other people going out of business and so many things changed that it just worked out in our benefit that through nothing on our own, it just was like, wow, well, this was the perfect time. Yeah. So for me, I actually have uh, many years in the advertising marketing industry. Uh, I started in vehicle wraps actually back when I was a kid and learned that under my father for many years. And one thing that I've always been able to do is grow up around other people 
who had marketing companies, who had advertising agencies mm. and really kind of see how they do things. So I started my kind of hobby type business back in high school, which was almost 10 years ago. Uh, and it was always just a hobby type business. It was on the side. I was working in retail, doing what I had to do to make money. And uh, when I took that, you know, when I jumped off that cliff, it, it didn't seem as deep as it should have. I thought that when COVID was going to, you know, close a lot of things down, I thought it would be a lot worse. And I did lose a few contracts that were larger because of the pandemic, but I didn't rely on those contracts. And it was an opportunity to see what I could have done to prevented losing them and really alter my success. So it, go, it goes both ways. Yeah, it was, you know, a trench, but at the same time, I think that I had enough knowledge to know what to change. Right. So it was kind of like a growing pain on steroids, right? Because you had, you had to, you know, get, get with it real quickly and you did and it's working and you're here. So, well, I'm always kind of fascinated by this. You know, if you look at like the depression, there were a lot of companies that did real well and a lot of entrepreneurs who were able to come, you know, out of that and, you know, really drive and create new industries and so I think we're going to be, you know, seeing a lot of that same thing. And, you know, I just look at, you know, Rolls Royce posting record sales, you know, Apple posting record sales. You've still got these industries that are that even with everything, you know, people not working and, you know, just this incredible just, I don't know what to put, angst within society. You know, there's these still industries that are just driving and growing ahead and and coming out. So it throwing you in with that, it's really cool to see you starting a new business within that and see, being able to grow and thrive, you know, because it's kind of a, in my mind, almost a, as above, so below, you know, you burn down the forest while well, there's room for new growth. And ultimately, you know, you need that and it's good. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think, you know, kind of like you said, you know, if you burn down a forest, that force is going to grow grow back stronger. All right. Question 13. What does it mean to be a man in today's world? This question, I think, you know, I think what it means to be a man has constantly changed and it's still changing. But the most important thing I think is that you're kind of the foundation still for the family, but whereas you were the bait, like you were the pillar, you were the person that everyone relied on. I think that that has really opened up to, you know, being aware that you have to rely on other people and not be afraid to ask others, you know, what can I do to help you? Can you help me with this? And being more open, I think, is really a big part of how it's changed. So instead of trying to do it all by yourself, uh, realize that there's more of a uh, found more of a found instead of being the foundation, there's more of a foundation for you to to rely upon. Does Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's hard to admit sometimes because I get, you know, I let my pride get in the way of myself so often that I'm scared to say, hey, I don't know what to do in this situation. And uh, I've I've overgrown that a lot by running my own business in the last year. But I think that some people are so set on the idea that the man is the foundation of a family and it still can be, but I think a, what is it? It takes a village to raise a family or, and I think that that's more of the society that we've always been in, but 
we're just realizing it a little bit differently now, but I personally, my goal is to be able to provide for my family, to provide for my business and to provide for those around me who need it. But I understand that my wife has the need and the drive to be who she wants to be. So if she wants to go make her own money, I will support that. Yeah. So definitely taking on a more open-minded uh, approach and not being afraid to ask for help and, and, and maybe let other people do, do some of the polling if, if they want to. Right. Definitely. All right. Well, that was the end of the first official 13 questions and we can get into the bonus questions now if uh, there's no objections. Okie dokie. Bonus question number one. What quality do you most admire in a woman? So I kind of touched on this in question number 13 and it's having a drive to be successful. As a business owner and someone who's kind of taking these risks and stuff, I think that my wife having her drive to support my success and be independent on her own, it really goes kind of hand in hand because she's able to kind of keep me straight on my path, but she's very independent at the same time and can go out and do what she needs to do. And really, I think that my biggest admiration is you know, that, that drive for success, that drive to be independent and be, you know, accomplished in life. So somebody that, uh, uh, I don't want to say isn't con easily content, but I don't know. Uh, Ambition. Yeah. Here you go. It took me a minute to think of that word too. <laughs> a good word. <laughs> Cool. Bonus question number two. What rule do you have for yourself that you never break? And why do you think that it's important? I don't have an actual answer for this one. Um, I don't know what rules I have for myself because I think if I make a rule, and this is more in a life sense rather than like a literal rule sense, that uh, if I were to make a rule for life that I had to stick by, that things are changing so rapidly in today's society that if I got stuck on that rule, it could interfere with a different outcome. And it's important to kind of keep that open-mindedness and be aware that, you know, oh, I'm never going to drink alcohol. Okay, well, you know, what if you decided, hey, maybe I want to try this glass of wine or, you know, some scotch, you know, it's okay to change your rules and it's okay to break them. I think. So you're not an absolutist then, right? So like yeah. there's, there, there could be a context in which a rule could be broken. That would be like the, the con, like the, that would provide you some like benefit, right? Like, yeah. So like be flexible, right? You, you have to be flexible with everything. I think that, you know, if you set a rule that you can't be 15 minutes late to work every day and as the owner of the company, you're 15 minutes late every day, I think that you're expecting others to have higher standards than you do. But on top of that, you never know that someone struggled with their child who's, you know, two years old for an hour just before work, trying to get them up, get them ready at whatever time. And I think that really you have to just be more understanding of people. And like we said, you know, be flexible with any rules that you have. Well, I mean, that's a rule right there, being understanding with people, giving people the benefit of the doubt. Cause that's something that I find myself reminding myself to do every now and again. I like, I like to say that 50% of the people, half the people you see out there are, are below average IQ. 
because that's the definition of an average, right? So just kind of have a little bit of compassion and, uh, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt. Be but human. Yeah. yeah. That, that's my rule. Be human. Bonus question number three. What would you tell your teenage self? I don't think there's really anything that I would tell myself other than not to give up. Um, I think that before there were so many things that I would just give up on because I didn't see instant results. And one thing I've learned is that it's not, it's not the prize at the end. It's getting to the prize because once you get the prize, it's over. What's next? So I think that the journey along which you do something is the actual prize compared to the gold at the end of the rainbow. So enjoy the ride. Right? Definitely. Get on board with that. Bonus question four. What turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Can you go a little bit more in depth on this question? Well, um, I can... Uh... Well, you can break it down into three separate areas. You could take it that way. It could be one for creative, you know, creativeness, spiritual, spirituality, emotionally, or there could be one thing that does it for all three. Um, I don't, honestly, I don't remember what I, what my answer was for this question. Um, but just looking at, the notes here, um, I, I mentioned the, the whole not wearing a mask thing, like putting on a, a facade, trying to be someone who you're, who you're not like online. Like and I mentioned Grimstake and he, he's in the notes here again. So, uh, and that was for, for being authentic, like authenticity, originality, um, tr expressing your true essence, your true self. I think that like curiosity and wonder would be like my biggest, you know, influence or, you know, thought for that direction. Um, you know, things that kind of motivate me to get going in the day is just, you know, what's going to happen today. What's new, what's different. And really just the adventure, the journey, the, you know, what is next is kind of a motivational factor for me. And I think that's what kind of gets me when, when I'm designing something. So we'll get cre kind of creative on that aspect with this. When I'm doing designs, I change the music based on what project I'm working on. Um, so if I'm doing something for, you know, a venue and it's more elegant. I'm going to listen to something, you know, more relaxed and, you know, elegant classical music. It's if part of the uh, recipe in your cake mix. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that wonder or that, uh, that, that curiosity of, you know, how you're going to get there is just kind of influenced by, what the project is and what happens. Sorry, I lost my train of thought of that. <laughs> no, I, I, I really like that. Just, you know, you kind of have this, you know, you add this other tonality into your work. You know, it's uh, an extra influence on top. So that's really cool that you, you know, you, you know, kind of blend in your enjoyment and what you're absorbing into your output and your creativity as you work. Yeah, and, you know, it's like I said, every situation is kind of different, but when it comes to it overall, I think that what drives me is that curiosity and wonder, you know, it's just how I'm going to do something different. It reminds me of how when you're playing some video games, you can't see all the map and you have to go and like explore the map and your line of vision is only so far and so it's kind of like, like you said, like enjoying the journey, but you're discovering what the unknown is too, right? So that's definitely fulfilling the curiosity. Bonus question five. What is your single greatest driving force in life and how do you further it? 
So I think that still kind of goes back to what I, what I was speaking on is that curiosity, that journey. Um, the thing that really motivates me on a personal level is that I want to create a successful life for my family. You know, the classic American dream that everyone wants to be happy and be free. And, you know, I think that for me, that making sure that my family is provided for and that I'm able to make an impact on my community is really my greatest driving force overall. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. All right. What about this one? What do you choose to ignore? I don't ignore anything. I think that everything has a purpose, but I don't let the drama of politics, religion, what's going on in the world. I don't let that get to influence me on what actions I take, I take in life. And I just try to keep open-minded about everything. And I think that with media really influencing how we make our decisions and coming from marketing, like there's so much that I'm aware of as, you know, advertising, for example, if you watch an episode of, you know, the Simpsons and they're holding a specific drink, then you probably know what that drink is. And that's kind of how marketing is in media that they put something in front of you so many times that you start to believe it, even if it's not true. Yeah. Everybody should become very aware of marketing and its control on how you, uh, you think you're behaving because sometimes, I mean, it's, it's insidious. It's mind control. If you, I mean, in my opinion, well, you know, think, think, think about it this way. You know, it used to be if I lived in a small community and I heard a bunch of, you know, things from, you know, I don't know, whatever it's going to be. Let's say a local plant, you know, that was just discovered, you know, that we didn't think we could eat before, but it's super nutritious. And I hear that from three or four people. They say, yeah, it's good. I might start trying it. Now, if I'm, I'm online and I see all these influencers that I think are disconnected, you know, and then I see it here and I read it here, I, I don't realize that it's just complete native advertising and marketing. And yeah, that will show up on your local news and a pre-produced clip that looks like it's part of the production. But no, it's because they get to run a free piece and save the money. And yeah, that is being worked at every angle in conjunction behind the scenes. So they're linking up your social profiles. You know, yeah, should be very aware of it. You can start taking control of your reality in a much uh, better way. And if you're cool like you, you know, I, I know you're so aware of it. It seems like, uh, you know, you're pushing the the positive benefits and aspects and not trying to, you know, just completely envelop people into, you know, whatever horror <laughs> can make money out there. There's some people that as long as there's a dollar sign on it, they're on board. Yeah. So with that, um, marketing is manipulation mm -hmm. and it's uh, the reality of it. And like you said, us being consumers, being more aware of what we're being thrown and fed, I think that what sets me apart is that I'm not just feeding you junk. You can go and say, hey, I want to order this T-shirt. I want to order 500 of them. And someone's going to say, okay, we'll give you 500 for 15 bucks each. And it's going to have, you know, one picture on the front. But what quality of shirt are you getting for that $15? And you're just going to buy it because you've seen this supplier all over the internet and you know their name, you've seen their commercial, but you don't realize that there's a better option that's an equivalent price and that's kind of where I'm set apart from others is that you can go online and order any of the promotional products I order. It's a given. You can go to McDonald's and get a burger. You can go to Burger King and get a burger, but what you're not getting that you get at a local restaurant is that quality. Everyone else is so mainstream on click 
order pay that when you come to someone like me, you're not being manipulated by all the advertisements of, hey, you have to order this specific item. You can get a good quality product and realize that it's the same price. So it sounds like you're just trying to be very aware of uh, what, because you, you realize that there's forces out there trying to influence you, like you said, it, but, uh, just because the product is. Yeah, this the is the real world, right? It's why you uh, you tell you know fairy tales to children to keep them from from going into the woods. You know, it's a core of persuasion. You know, persuasion is mind manipulation. It's getting somebody to come to your side. But if you frame it as in, look. I think that this is beneficial for a bunch of reasons, and I think if you see it from my perspective, you will also agree with that. So I'm going to give you my perspective. I'm going to put that in your mind. So if you're doing it through an altruistic realm, meaning, look, there's a billion products out there and there's a billion bad products out there. I can help you find the good product. Um, yeah, it's just uh, – it's a different interesting way to to go about it. It's it's really cool to have people out you, out there – you know, like that, that are kind of, you know, looking at actually, you know, connecting people with um, the quality because you need that and you need that marketing. Because if, if I create a quality product and I can tell nobody about it, then it really doesn't mean anything. But if I can hook up with a guy like you and you can tell people about it because, you know, they know that you've got a line on good quality. I mean, that's the marketing that you want. So what's the marketing through you? Yeah, good deals, good quality and, you know, whatever – you know, artistic slap that goes on top of it that really puts the icing on the cake. So, yeah, I don't know, man. That's that's exciting to see other people viewing it. We've kind of lived in that, you know, bulk sale, fake marketing, as many ads as you can get pay, placed around and, you know, treat the people like sheep. Yeah, and back to, back to the question, like you said, it's being aware. I mean, if you're not aware, you become that sheep. Like you just said, it's, there's so much going on that when you focus on your foundation and you know where you want to be and what you want to do, that you're not being as easily manipulated by the media and you're able to kind of live a happier life. One thing that uh, going in and starting my own business has done is I picked up fishing and fishing is not something I do all the time, but I had not fished for years. Like I don't even remember the last time I fished until a couple of years ago or till last year. And last year I decided, Hey, I'm going to get a fishing pole. And when you start disconnecting from what everyone else tells you to do and what you're being influenced to do, you really simplify your life and really enjoy the quality of what you're doing. It's it's like a magic trick. Like I don't. I cut my cable years ago, and I, I stopped paying attention to politics for the most part. And just the simplification that that gives you is is, is outstanding. Um, but just to, to turn it back to what we're saying, like we can sit here and talk about like the negative aspects of of advertising marketing and like how it can be mind control and how you have to be weary of what you let through that filter. But I don't know. I find myself in a gray space because I have now, and you're already there, uh, Alan, I've crossed over into that gray space of like, I am now part of that world because uh, like we have to promote the show. Right. So uh, with, with that in mind, I, I wanted to bring up the the gratitude jingle because that's kind of like our example of like the type, the flavor of marketing that the show is really trying to push. And that's all about like positivity, right? So the gratitude jingle, we do it every intro and we just take a few minutes out to, to say something that we're grateful for. And that we, and of course we encourage other people to do that uh, not only when they're listening to the show, but like to kind of do that like every morning and tie it into the ritual. And a huge and value for value shout out to failed or not. What am I saying? Failed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm thinking of my jingle from my other show for, uh, for Sir Felix, uh, for providing that. And he does lots of cool music. And this one particular, it was, I don't know, 
I think it's one of his his better ones out there. So encourage you guys out there to support Felix. And he puts all of his stuff up on Bandcamp. So, I mean, you can go out there, you can take it, you can rip it, you can use it um, and enjoy it. And I know he's not going to mind, but, um, you know, put some food on his table. Give his creativity some fire. Give him some drive to to make more for you because I guarantee you, you know, it, it psychs him up and support Sir Felix. Yeah, I like to think of it. I like to think of him as our bard. If we had like a D and D. Oh, group, that's right? that's fun. You yeah. Take care of your bard, right? A bard with a synthesizer. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, any other comments on that question? I guess <laughs> get to the last one. No. All right. Uh, what do you hope people will say at your funeral? I don't know because I don't have any expectations for anyone. Um, dying is something that I'm, you know, comfortable with. I think that life is natural and obviously knowing that you're going to die at some point makes it a lot easier if you can cope with it. Uh, one thing that is, you know, big to me is that I just, like I said, I want to be able to provide for my family and I would hope that rather than saying something, that there would be people there to support my family, support my wife and my kids, you know, when I pass on that they're not just left alone. I think that that's not necessarily saying something, but it says a lot at the same time. Yeah. I like that approach to the question. You took the say part kind of literally, right? So I actually speak louder than words. Yeah. And that type of thing. it's, it's really, you know, the biggest thing that anyone can hope for is that when you pass pass it to the afterlife, you know, you're not left alone. You don't want your family to be left alone. And if people are showing them, then I think that's the most impactful, you know, thing that can be said. Yeah, it's a unique approach to the question. I don't think that we've ever had that one before. Adam, do you, can you? Uh-uh, not at all. Yeah. But I, I can like I can certainly tell you your last answer is fueling into my gratitude, so. Yeah, I got I to gotta come up with one of those, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was the, the whole 21 questions. You have 13 and then plus the seven bonus. So... What did uh, what do you think, Alan? Like, what did you, what was your experience like going through sitting down with the questions, thinking of answers, all that jazz? So this has been my first podcast, um, first question answer type thing, and uh, it was a different experience. I think that the further like we got along, the more comfortable I got, and I think that you know it's. Definitely. It gets you thinking more because I can sit there and I can read the questions and I can think about my answers and stuff. But then when you actually get into conversation about the questions, I think it opens up a lot more thought that you didn't like initially think about. Does that make sense? Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's, once you start down, you know, start the conversation, it can go anywhere. Yeah. Down the rabbit hole. Yeah. So now that you're a little bit more, yeah, first first time on a podcast, you seem uh, pretty pretty calm to me. You know, when I I remember I remember the first time I called into an internet radio show, I was so so nervous. But yeah, dude, you did great. Um, Do we have a copy of that audio file, Bill? Oh, dude, I'm, I don't I don't even know where I would find it. I'll talk I mean, to Grim Steak. Still around? <laughs> it wasn't cruising with Steak though. It, that was the thing. But uh, yeah, now that you're a little bit more comfortable, is there, is there any like last minute like addendums you want to make or clarifications or more? Uh, we can uh, your, uh, talk about your websites. I don't know if you've actually said the addresses yet, but we'll definitely want to mention that before we end the conversation. Um, I don't know because like I'm so ADD that what I said 10 minutes ago, I don't even remember. So I mean, I'm really it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Um, and I think that like knowing like where I could have said something differently or better 
I know I'm going to piss a few people off with the uh, unemployment comment, but hopefully that doesn't affect you guys as much as it does me. Well, we'll find out when you share the show. And I mean, if people around you listen, like, I don't know. We've listen, had- if people are upset for yeah. just saying what you see in the world around you, then shame on them for not accepting perspective. Because uh, everybody I know is looking for work and they're running into the same thing and same reasons. And it's not coming from me. It's coming from the people that are telling them why they're not working and why they're not showing up. And it's uh, – it is. It is. There may be a multitude of other reasons, but I can at least speak regionally. And hell, if that pisses you off, man, we got to change the system because it's not all right. I think that if you're offended by it, then you know it's true. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It's a good little marker to use, I guess, for most people. Or if you just stop being offended altogether, that'd be great too. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> no, it's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so bannerbeasts.com, is that the correct address? No, it's uh, Beast Marketing. Beast LLC.com. Marketing. Beast com, And, uh, yeah, so people can reach out to you there. They can, uh, uh, they can go to the website, which is BeastMarketingLLC.com. And on there, I've got, you know, some training promotional products, my giveaway kind of announcement for the Apple AirPod Pros, uh, and there's not a lot on there right now because, like I said, I'm getting it upgraded and adding on to it for kind of all the content that I've been building up. And I think that once I get all that completed, the ironic thing about being a marketing agency is that you spend so much time doing marketing for everyone else that your falls last because at the end of the day, you don't want to spend you know, five hours working on your website when you worked on five other websites for, you know, that amount of time. That's every profession. The plumber has leaky pipes in his house. It's, it's the reality. I mean, but, uh, Facebook and Instagram are beast marketing LLC. And then TikTok is beast marketing. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking of marketing for a marketing agency I actually did give away one of your cards to somebody at contact at the cabin it was the event that uh, Darren and Graham and and the guys from Snake Brothers put on uh, it was an event down in Utah but yes yeah, so somebody I forget who it was but I'm sure that they listened to this show so maybe you'll they'll reach out to you um because you gave me a bunch of stickers to take out there and and your business cards so I was able to do a little bit of that on vacation, which was fun. So yeah, that was, uh, that was neat. And I think, uh, so I think that'll, that'll do it for, for this episode. Yeah. Alan, man, that was, uh, that was fun. Thank you for, uh, for joining us and thank you for all the, the help that you've given the show. I mean, it's, uh, it is value for value and you are in it more than just about anybody out there. So, uh, well, I definitely much think appreciated. that we have, I appreciate it as well. And the opportunity, you know, it's great to have these conversations and the questions, you know, get you thinking about things. And, you know, what I hope that we can start doing for the podcast is, you know, unlimited opportunities that partnering with, you know, everyone at 13 Questions, I think that when we build that communication and we get those, you know, projects announced on, you know, social media and publicly, that people will be impressed with them. I don't want no whole night. I don't want no whole night. Yo, what? I don't want no whole night. I don't want no whole night. Yo, what? I don't want no whole night. I don't want no whole night. Yo, what? I don't want no whole night. I don't want no whole night. Yo, what? I don't want no whole night. I don't want no whole night. Yo, what? I don't want no whole night.
I know one not her way, they know what's one man rich and another man poor Why we ain't satisfied, why we gotta have more Why your suicide rates on the rest so high Why I tell you the truth but you say don't lie Why is being a good father at an all time low Why is it acceptable, yo, why I don't know Why she blame him and he blame her, it's useless Ask yourself this question, why you making excuses Why do parents gotta bury their kids Why we text and drive, not caring how scary it is is. Why you so hard to forgive and leave the past behind And if you did, then that's divine Why don't you help your brother when you see him fall Why do we act like God don't see it all Why do we call them black, them white, them Asians and use labels Now that's racism I know what not her way lay 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 Why is there innocent people locked up for life? Why some people can't say nothing nice? Why do we always got a question with all of the means? And why won't you follow your dreams? Tell me why. The night when you took my dad, why'd you let me see my grandpa cry? And tell me why. And why do you choose to hide, even though you was born to fly? And tell me why. And why don't we turn from all the hate? And why don't we learn from why do I keep on wrecking these fat beats And teachers don't make more than professional athletes And why, and why, and why, and why, and why, and why I don't want no homework, no 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 this should be considered entertainment and not therapy. We hope you benefit from our resources available at 13questionspodcast.com. Thank you for listening.